Now another purpose for this tank is as an antifreeze reservoir. In fact, um, for those of you that are using a larger tank, an auxiliary water tank for water, no reason not to have this just be an antifreeze reservoir if you're in any situation where you think that the jetter might go below freezing. Uh, for that, we already have it, the valves in the right position. We can just fill this tank up with antifreeze. Uh, we recommend like a, uh, a minus 30 or so windshield washer fluid or a RV antifreeze that uh, can get down to very low, low uh, temperature ranges. Not like a glycol that goes in an engine. That's, well, environmentally, we're supposed to uh, uh, recommend that you stay away from those. Use windshield washer fluid or an RV antifreeze. And for that situation, which we'll cover in another video, but we'll just show you again, we need to pull this valve out to allow the antifreeze to come into the system. I'm sure you'll have a valve on your line going to your auxiliary water tank that you'll cut off. Otherwise, all this antifreeze is just gonna go right into your auxiliary tank. That's the problem. Typically, you would drain your auxiliary tank and then close the valve off, open this up, and now antifreeze can go in. If you want it to recirculate to your auxiliary tank some antifreeze just to freeze protect this bypass line, then you would leave this in this position and it'll just run for a, you know, a few seconds to purge antifreeze in that line. Or you can just put this in the opposite position like we talked about a moment ago and we'll recirculate the antifreeze to the antifreeze tank.